Ovarian and fallopian torsions are somewhat rare but still significant pathologies that uh, often present to an emergency room and uh, can be on the differential diagnosis of appendicitis. They represent about 3% of gynecological emergencies. So they're after, you know, ectopic pregnancy and, um, and, uh, and rupture of uh, ovarian cysts and, and other things, and other gynecological emergencies. 70% of these happen between 20 years and 39 years. And pregnancy and menopause are both um, risk factors. They increase the risk. So these people will show up with sudden unilat unilateral lower abdominal pain. So if this was on the right side, you would probably be thinking appendicitis. They have nausea and vomiting. They, uh, in some cases, have a palpable ovarian mass. Uh, in any case, 94% have, have a mass, whether or not it's palpable, but 94% have some kind of mass, usually an ovarian cyst. And the history usually has some element of recent vigorous activity, like exercise or sex. The uh, ultrasound and Doppler are the most common tests used for identifying uh, ovarian to torsions. They, it is, uh, it's a little bit uh, controversial how effective these are, either alone or in, c in combination. But the ultrasound can be used to see if there's uh, swelling of the ovary or tubes, and also can show any type of assist which could help lead to the diagnosis of torsion. Doppler can show if there is blood coming in or out of the ovary and uh, so so those things together are kind of the basis of diagnosis. MRI and CT uh, are also uh, not conclusively beneficial for diagnosis and, and are not done routinely currently, and uh, IL-6 is elevated in a lot of these cases, and so that's one thing that people use to increase the, the uh, index of suspicion. With all of these things, it's, uh, it's kind of a diagnosis of exclusion. You want to make sure it's not an ectopic pregnancy, uh, pelvic inflammatory disease, appendicitis or leiomyoma, and most of those are, are easier to diagnose so that it's easier to rule those out than to rule ovarian torsion in. Historically, these were, these were taken out uh, along with the ovary, so, so the ovary would be removed in all of these cases originally. Um, but uh, laparoscopic detorsion is now the the treatment of choice, and uh, the reason they took him out before was because there was uh, some concern that there would be a blood clot that could you know potentially go to the heart and lungs. But uh, as people start gradually to do these detorsions, they they didn't see that happening, and so it's it's now become accepted. On this uh, laparoscopic surgery, the ovary is evaluated for its uh, viability, and usually, or earlier on, they used a dusky appearance to indicate that there was there was sufficient or uh, serious ischemia. But uh, but a lot of those uh, that have a dusky appearance have been left in and and ended up being viable and healthy ovaries. So so now it's uh, most of these are left in if they can be. 
In some cases, though, there is a salpingo-oophorectomy done, which uh, is done for the non-viable ovaries and also for the potential of malignancies. And uh, the, the times that you don't treat this surgically are, are sometimes in babies. You can kind of watch it and see if it see if the um, see if it uh, resolves but but even in babies they are uh, usually treated surgically to prevent the recurrence of uh, ovarian torsion after some kind of a detorsion is done they are the uh, a higher dose of OCP can suppress the growth of ovarian cyst, which is the major cause of ovarian torsion. And in some cases, uh, O for apexy is used to suture the ovary to uh, surrounding ligaments in order to keep it in place. This is often done in children as well as patients that have had a previous oophorectomy on the contralateral side, especially those who have had the oophorectomy due to uh, ovarian torsions. Isolated fallopian torsions also happen. They're, they're even more rare, and uh, they have the, a similar pathology or pathophysiology where there's some kind of a mass or lesion that that leads to the torsion of the fallopian tubes. Hydrosalpings, paratubal cysts, neoplasms, and ectopic pregnancy all in increase the risk of fallopian torsions. These are most often diagnosed upon surgery. Uh, the other diagnoses are, are excluded, and, and if there's a high index of suspicion for fallopian torsion, then a surgery is done, and uh, that's when these are usually uh, diagnosed. You can also see uh, masses on types of imaging that might help lead to this diagnosis, but, but you'll never know until you get in there. <laughs>